Hey folks and welcome to this great dance studio in Hong Kong. Today we're going to be testing out the new Canon R10 which I've just had my first hands on with over the last couple of days and we're going to test it out with a couple of different dance scenarios. Now I'm going to assume that if you're watching this video you're considering the camera and you've probably already seen several videos on the R10 and you're well across the specifications of it. Leave me a comment below how many videos have you already watched on this camera before this one. This is an APS-C camera, it's their entry level model, it's a 1.6x crop factor, 24.2 megapixels. Despite being entry level, it has some pretty impressive specs, but as has been the custom of late, it's also been crippled in some fundamental ways. So we're going to shoot away with it, we'll do some moving shots and some static ones. This isn't exactly an action camera despite the frames per second that it's capable of. I'm going to give you sample files you can check out for yourself. There'll be a link for them below. For now, let's let dancer Rosanna warm up and get into shooting. Alright, we've got a lot of light colors going on here, so let's see if we can... It's a bit like a hotel room here, let's see if we can figure out how to turn off everything except that one. Nope, nope, nope. Yes. Yes? Do you need a cigarette? <laughs> like Krusty the Clown over here, as soon as you step off stage, reality sets in. Okay, that was lovely, thank you. You're all warmed up now, I can yeah. see you're all warmed up. So if we do some performance in here, are you sure the floor is okay? It looks very slippery, even on my normal shoes. Fine, okay, great. So I saw you had a black outfit. Maybe yeah. we can wear that one next. In terms of the lighting, these lights are kind of cool, but they create lots of little point lights. Rather than turn the overhead lights on that are gonna give her shadows uh, under her eyes and stuff, I'm thinking we have four LED panels. We can run them down that side of the room. And then if you dance this way, like where the audience here, mm -hmm. then she'll be side lit from both sides. And I think it could give a pretty cool effect. So if you don't mind the change, I'll set up the lights. Great. Great. Okay, so I haven't had a chance to look at these on a big screen yet, but on the back of camera and through the viewfinder, it seems to be keeping up quite well with her. I would say, however, the face detect isn't flawless. There's several times where it's like actually missing her getting a, an arm or something, or picking up her reflection in the mirror, even when that's the back of her head, then trying to get it to find her face again can be a little bit difficult. So I need to work my way through the different focus modes. We've got this cool lighting set up now with the two rows of light on either side of the room. I don't know what the routine's going to be this time, but she's in a black outfit now. We'll get her hopefully to do something short one time so we get a sense of what's gonna happen and then shoot it again the second time probably better and we might actually put this camera onto the gimbal and have my videographer film one of the routines so we can show you what it can do video wise this guy will actually do up to 4k 60 but with an additional crop in video on top of the 1.6 crop so the 18 to 45 that i'm using may not even be wide enough let's see that first little practice was really nice. I think Rosanna was going through and just kind of figuring out her dance. So she was going more to the mirror, but it actually works out really nicely. Then she's backlit by these lights. So I'm gonna ask her to continue practicing before doing the one facing this direction. 
turn the ACs off, put a little bit of atmosphere in, I've switched back to the Prime, which means unless she's at the back of the room, I won't get all of her in, but I wanna get some variation and a shallower depth of field. So let's pop a little bit of this guy in and I'll get Ernest to do more later, but with the AC off, it lingers reasonably well. If you've been following for a while, I did a budgetography shoot with Steph in Lower Manhattan as a ninja for Halloween, and we had these gloves. I thought they could be cool if she was wearing that, then as she spins, they spin around. Um, I need to go back to the wider lens. The 35 with the 1.6 crop is just too long for this room. I tossed up, should I ask for some faster lenses, but I thought, is anyone gonna be buying the entry-level body but then using the 51.2, like it just doesn't seem realistic or a super fast prime, uh, super fast wide angle. I don't think people are gonna be spending $10,000 on lenses and then sub 1,000 on a body. So the 18 to 45 kit and then the 35 1.8 macro prime, I think are a fair test for this kind of a camera. Also, from what I've seen online, the 51.2, you can't even hold the camera because it takes up that entire grip area. Here recording through the screen with the Atomos, you can see how the autofocus was doing. Note that using an external recording device tends to slow the camera down ever so slightly. Ah, I just noticed that this camera has a big dust spot on it already. That is, I'll grab the blower. That is one of the many things that they have crippled on this camera. Now, everyone talks about the Canon cripple hammer. It's kind of unfair. Every manufacturer in every segment in every industry isn't going to put all of the best features into the entry level body. Of course, they want you to cycle up through them. I actually think if you look at what you're getting in DSLR terms, this is offering so much as an entry level. I think it's way beyond a Rebel and it's good that they didn't call it a Rebel camera. 15 frames a second mechanical, 23 in electronic, dual pixel AF, it's an impressive little camera. Yes, it's only got the one card, so it's got the baby battery, not the bigger battery, fair enough. Things to note, and I'm not saying this is an unfair cripple, but things to know what separates this from the next models up. It doesn't have C-Log. It doesn't have the option for you to close the shutter as you're changing lenses, which is how we got that dust spot after three hours of shooting. It doesn't have IBIS. It doesn't, I already mentioned C-Log. I can't even keep up. It doesn't have C-Log. It's not a backside illuminated sensor. It's not, uh, it's not stacked. It's also not dust and weather resistant. So my idea of going and shooting in the rain, that was actually an empty offer because I would probably kill this camera given the weather that's outside. It's also tiny, but if you want a small light camera, that's an absolute plus. If you've got gigantic A pans like I do, then it's not really the ideal one. I can basically fit two fingers in the grip, three if I kind of squish them in, the three little ones. But again, I can walk around with this and I barely even notice I'm carrying it. It's so incredibly light. The only other thing, if you're recording to an external camera, it's disabling all the displays. And I tell you, one, coming to terms with, you know, zooming in the opposite way that I'm used to on my cameras, and then having to look at an external display when you're trying to frame up a shot, you feel totally dyslexic and left and right and everything's off level, all just seems backwards. Next up, we had Rosanna change into a street outfit and she's going to do some kind of K-pop style dancing rather than the ballet.
Okay, folks, so if you're looking for a small and compact, reasonably well-priced, quite good performance mirrorless camera, I think the R10 is a great option. A couple of things we're gonna get to. One is there's no headphones for monitoring the audio, so things like that are hard to deal with in the field. But overall, whilst I have some criticisms of the camera, I do think for the price point and what it's up against, it's really a well-featured camera. For me, for my hand size, it doesn't really work. And, you know, essentially you can't expect mid-range or flagship performance from an entry-level camera. But I do think this is offering a good deal of features for the price. Now, in terms of the shooting with Rosanna this morning, first of all, shout out to Rosanna. First time shooting with her, she was fantastic. We'll put her socials on screen and in the description below so you can check them out. And you can download the photos from our session today as well. You know, with the backlighting we were using and the haze, it made for a pretty difficult test on really any camera. On one hand, you've got a really contrasty scene with the backlighting. On another hand, with the haze, you're lacking contrast, which is helpful for getting focus on the face. So it was a difficult challenge. I don't know how the video autofocus is doing right now, but we did find using the 35 mil that it actually struggled sometimes to keep up. Still, for the price, pretty good, but don't expect Canon's best, you know, dual pixel autofocus that you're maybe used to on the higher end bodies. The Animal Eye autofocus also worked fairly well. In terms of the video, not having stabilization, not having log, if you're used to higher end features, that's missing. But I really think for this price point, potential buyers probably wouldn't be using that stuff. Just note, if you do want to use this for production type stuff, it grades reasonably well, according to my videographer. You can see the difference straight out of camera versus graded. You're going to want to grade it, but it means you're going to need to know how to do that as well. In terms of the stills, I would say for the price point, I'm happy with the image quality. Overall, it's looking quite good. It really does start to fall apart under a higher ISO load, however. I would want to be shooting down, you know, 800 and below. We did shoot through to 6400, however. I'll give you samples. You can make up your own mind on that if that's going to work for you and your standard of the image quality you're looking for. But yeah, for what this camera says it will deliver, I think it really does deliver. And, you know, I hope you can appreciate why we went with those two lenses for the test rather than the really primo glass. Of course, some people may be wanting a backup camera to their pro camera and will have access to those lenses, but I think for the majority of users, considering this camera, you're probably looking at those lower end lenses as well. Leave me a comment if you're in the Canon ecosystem, what you think of the R10. Check out the sample files below. If you're not already, please do subscribe. We recently found out like two thirds of our watch time comes from unsubscribed viewers. So do subscribe, turn on notifications. We've got some great stuff coming. If you've made it this far to the end, leave me a comment, something about Maseratis. Random comment, leave people wondering what the hell we're all talking about. Leave me any questions you have. Thanks to BH Photo for shipping this one out to Hong Kong for me to test out. I'll see you soon. How's the macro lens do here? Okay.